Well, good morning and welcome to Working Horses with Jim on a beautiful, sunshiny morning. This morning, William is already busy unloading hay. Oh, unloading hay. Oh my goodness. William! <laughs> this morning, William is already busy unloading wood with, with Lady and Ken. William thinks I'm crazy because I just called it hay. I bet he does. I he, did a load of hay already. So. He, he already did a load of hay with Lady and Ken, so maybe that why, is why it was on my mind. I was inside and I could see them from my kitchen window, and it is such a bright and sunshiny morning. And uh, after a lot of gloomy days, so it's so nice. We have a lot of things going on this morning, and we wanted to take you along, so we hope that you enjoy just a typical day here on the farm with what we're doing this spring to get ready for life ahead. It's amazing how much wood we've gone through lately. Yeah. Even though it's spring, boy oh boy, we've gone through, I couldn't believe it. It's a lot. Yeah, it does. Okay, and we're back out again, and look, William is almost done here with load number two of the firewood. He's going to take Lady and put her away, and he's got something new he's going to do with Ken today. And Ken says, what about me? Don't I get mine off? <laughs> so Lady's done for the day, and William's going to unharness her, and um, she can kind of take it easy for the rest of the day. Okay, so I got... Lady brushed up. William put on the long lines on Ken, so he's got longer lines on here. He's getting a whipple tree behind him and a chain. He's going to try his hand at um, skidding with Ken, but before he skids with him, I think he's going to take a, a ride him out there. We were, at, we were having coffee this morning, and Jim said, do you want to ride him or drive him out? And William said, okay, I, I can give him a ride. And it's still a ways up there, isn't it? It is, yeah. <laughs> Jim was saying he uses the, this 
And so Jim was just saying how that's handy for riding horse, you know, getting onto a horse. It's sort of like a stirrup. So off they go. Jim decided to use Ken for skidding because he's just kind of a, a slower moving horse. It's not that slow moving though. I'm having to jog, jog a little to keep up with him. So William, you were saying that you've been skidding a little bit with your carriage horse, Randy, right? Yep. He worked pretty good, actually. What? Better than I thought he would. Yeah. And you were telling us that he um, had to figure out, because he didn't have the shafts yeah. beside him, what to do. Yeah, he didn't know what to do without the yeah. And then after that, he just figured it out, huh? Yeah. After I used him for a little bit, he figured it out, and now he works good. That's good. So you're just getting for your own firewood? Yeah. Just have to cut it up a little smaller. Yeah. Yep. That yep. So when William's not working here, he's still got to work at home to keep things going too. You can't get fat and lazy, can you? I guess not. <laughs> got to keep going. Yeah, that's right. It's the best thing for you anyways. Yeah, I know. Better than being fat and lazy, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's certainly a nice day to be out today. We were just also saying that probably by this afternoon, a lot of this snow will be gone. The good thing is, the, the reason that they can skid and why Jim wants to be out here today is because the ground is frozen, so it won't get everything all muddy and dullish saw so much. So we're going through the pasture where Jim's been doing clearing and we're going to end up in the woods beyond it. And that's where he's cutting firewood. So what do you think of riding Ken instead of driving him? I think he rides pretty good. Good. If I would be cold, I probably would drive him out. Yeah. That would feel good if I would be cold. Yes. But you were saying this earlier, you're not, you're not cold at all. Not really, no. You've been working. Yeah, I've actually been sweating a little bit. Yeah. Good in, so. Yeah, you don't want that either. No. So we're almost to our destination here. And there's Bill and Baron. Barry. Hi, Barry.
with you. Okay. So that you can be a help. There's a lot of things that you're doing. Get the brush down and move out of the way. Move out of the way with you. So uh, I've got this nice trail here. I've got this trail. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight trees down. It's all just firewood trees. Mostly, well, some of them will have to be for the team, and some of them you can see the bill. So, uh, I think, I'll back in here, hitch on to this one, and get this out of the way a little bit, and then I'll help you. And you can start doing a little skidding on your own. For my regular viewers, I'm just curious if you can see what's different about Bill and Baron today. If you do, put it in the comment. Tell me what you think. You go get can.
Okay, so William, I want to show you, explain how I do things when I'm skating with a single horse. And this is not necessarily the way you have to do it. It's just the way I've always done it, done it more often than not. Sometimes I'll drive with, with the double lines, but so often what I do is just, you, I actually hitch up the team lines. Have I I've explained this to you, how I do this? Yeah. I actually hitch the team lines up, so I will actually hitch both sides up to the bat. Yeah. And I'll actually drive them right here, right beside them. Okay. In a lot of ways, I feel this is actually safer because you're really close to the horse. Yeah. You're away from the log. All you're gonna be concerned with is getting um, squished between a tree and him. That's yeah. the biggest yeah. problem with skin right here. Right it takes a little bit for a horse to get used to it, but not much. Um, so that's usually what I do. And then when I go to hitch on, it's actually so much easier because I slide back here. I just have just the one line one to line. deal with. I just slide it back and forth to steer him. You know, slide it over his butt a little bit if I want to haul him a little more and, and stay on this side if I want to G him. Okay. So what I do is I try to do the exact same thing every time. So I will always take the horse up in, or almost always, take the horse up in and I'll stop at the tree. I'll put my chain on with him looking at me. Okay, yeah. And then I'll come and grab the whoop tree and him and I'll spin him to the left. I'll haul him around uh -huh. every time. If he knows that, he knows every time he's gonna haul around. One problem with that is you get back there, he starts going before you tell him to go because it's just, oh, I know I'm gonna do this, so I just do it type of thing. So yeah. it's important to catch him fast so you catch him before he does it. And, and so you're telling him to go, not he's telling him to go. So then I'll swing around with one hand on this, this line here, and or if I'm using the long lines, you could have both hands both. with two lines that you're dealing with. And it's harder to steer them or harder to control them. Yeah. Also, you have all that extra slack that is, because of all those lines. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure that's what you're used to when you've skated with firewood, yeah. you've always done it that way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I've done it that way too, and I just feel that this is actually a lot better. So I think I'm gonna have you do it my way. Okay. I'm not saying you have to continue to do it my way. It takes a little bit to get used to, but um, either way works, okay? Yeah. Um, so then I'll swing around and I'll hitch them up. I still have my lines here and my, the ring of the whooper tree in the other hand. I'll hitch them up, I'll just real quick do it and I'll come back and grab his line so he stands good. Yeah. Then I will drive him from up there. From up the side and... and you might be amazed how much easier it actually is than to drive with long lines because and how much safer it is because you're not getting, when you're skidding there, you're jumping and trying to keep avoid getting run over by the log. Uh, you're, you, you gotta avoid other things fall on top of you. <laughs> This is a terrible thing to say, but if you're right here next to this horse, if something falls down, poor old horse is going to get it, but you might be saved. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds terrible, but it's true. It yeah. um, so, anyways, uh, let's do that. Let's just pull these lines right off and put the, his team lines back, back on. And, uh... I kind of wanted you to bring them out like that, just so I could show people what I'm doing. I've, I've shown this before, but it's just, uh, I think it's a good way to do it. So also, I didn't explain this when I, after I unhitch the log and I'm coming back, I just lead them. Just lead them back. To yeah. me, it's That's probably the easiest, it's it? the easiest way to do it. So I just lead them in. Lead them in like oh, now Ken really has not ever skeeted logs hardly at all. Um, he has, I don't even know if I've ever, ever really skidded them logs in the woods with him. I probably have, because I've had them for a long time. But anyways, it's not that much. Um, so because of that, when I go back right now to grab that chain, he's gonna still want to spin out of here, probably. Mm -hmm. So I have to be careful and make him stand. Okay. Huh? 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 One reason why he wants to fall, spin around is because you've been leading him back here. So he's used to following you. So he's yeah. expecting me that I want him to follow him around, but I don't. I want him to stay in there. So it's something you kind of got to teach into him. So as I'm coming back here, ho, 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 I grab this line like right here and I touch him over like that, ho. Now ho, now ho. It just takes a little while for him to realize he's not being led all the time. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna hitch onto here. That's a straight stem. As you can see, we get the log right here close. And if I pull straight, it's gonna get caught right in there. So I have to put a rolling hitch on one way or another. 
it's not allowing me to get very close to the butt, which is I much prefer. But with a rolling hitch like this, and I've explained this a lot to on this channel, with this rolling hitch, it should when he pulls, he'll pull it right between there. If I had a lot of branches on this piece, I wouldn't want to do that because it'd get bound up between the stump and between, stuck between a rock and a hard place. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but there is nothing. It's a fairly straight stem, so I can do that. Also, I'm not going to be able to get a really close hitch, and it doesn't matter. I'll pull them away a little ways. I'll stop them, back them up. Maybe even just this chain up a little farther because I prefer having it right about here. Right about, yeah. And then shorten up the chain so it's a nice short hitch. So then... There again, as I go back, he's going to want to turn because he's, he's expecting me to be leading him. To be leading him, yes. Yeah. So um, I have to watch that. Oh, no. No. I hurry him. Huh? Oh. Bye. 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 Oh. 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 Uh, 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 fortunately with YouTube we can edit a few things out so we don't have to show all this yeah, when we mess up big time. Yeah. Even though sometimes I like to show my, my mistakes, yeah. I don't always like to show my mistakes. Yeah. Oh. 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 Like I said, he's never, oh. he's never done this before. Yeah. A little bit. Ha. 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 Yep. Ha. Yep, ah, ah, yep, ah, ho. No. Oh. Ho. Oh. No. Oh. Oh. That'd be hard. Oh. Okay, you can see as it spun out of there, I didn't do exactly what I was hoping to do. It still got caught. Still got so caught. I have two options. I can swing that way or I can reset that hook. Yeah. G a little bit. G, 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 hip, G. Oh. Ah, uh ha, -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. oh. Oh. Uh -huh. Oh. Oh. Ha, ha. Oh. Oh. So that's where I want it. Oh. No. Now I'm going to readjust my chain a little bit. Cap is that. Oh. Another big advantage of driving like this is when you come to a tree like this, you can just let go. Can let go. And you know your lines are going to stay there. If you get your long lines, they got to drag. Yeah. And I always hated the idea of dragging because the log's gonna get log. caught on it or something. Yeah. So I kept up. Oh. So now I just unhitch and we're on hunk there too. Um, so I unhitch and then I lead him back to the next tree. So um, I'll let you practice without any camera going. So you can get an idea of what, what you're doing. So right here, I would normally just, right now especially, I would just release that. That way, in case he takes off, he's not going to catch you. Yeah. And then do that. And hit you back on. Um, another thing we'll do is we'll put the brain straps on him. Go ahead and do that. Okay. you got better control. Control is so important. you got to have that control. It's also going to shorten up your lines. So you might have to... Um, I prefer to twist just a little bit more. Put this other side like this. Okay, okay. Let's go a little better. Um, so you got to adjust sometimes where we have it hitched on the britching okay, yeah. to have it longer or shorter longer, to make it work, work for you. Okay, I am going to run this just to the pasture to take for a second. Okay. And I'll come back and I'll have to hitch on to that beech tree. Beech tree down there. And then. Um, after I move that, then there's some more small ones out there. Okay.
So what my plan is is to just leave the pieces right here and then I will come out later with the skid steer and just kind of sort them out here, cut them up to the size I want and then come in with the wagon of course and haul it home down to the farm. Well, Skip and I are on our way back from our little visit to Jim and William out in the woods. And I sure have been, been enjoying this path that Jim's made through the pasture. I look forward to many walks this spring and summer through here. I know he didn't make it for that reason, but it sure is nice. And even though these piles of brush will probably still be here till next fall, it's okay. I see progress and I see possibility. I hope there's a lot of things that in your lives that you are seeing progress and possibility in this spring. And um, we just hope you have a great day. And thanks for watching our channel. We really appreciate it. So here I'm back for another hitch. And I'm going to hitch on to these two tops, the beach right there. And this little soft maple right here. This is just the top of a tree. I took the tree out already. And William is hitching on to a little hardhack tree down there. We'll see how him and Ken do. They've skidded three or four or five hitches out here already. It's going to take a while for Ken to get used to it and to... And for... William to get used to can, of course. Hey, your, your tugs are unhitched too. You want them shorter. Don't worry about on this small one. That's, that's fine on this small one. Maybe they were too short to start with anyways. I don't know. I think you're all right if you can harm over a little bit. You got her now. I think you're all right. It's quite a bit different for William to be driving like that with the horse really close to the horse like that. But I think he'll get used to it and I expect he'll probably like it, but who knows? We'll have to see. Like I said, he can do it either way. So I'm going to get hitched onto his, this and get it out of here. William, try to get him right through there. Here comes William, another beauty about that one single horse is he can slip right through these little spots like this to get the, his little piece in here. Of course, he's been, it's lunch time, so we're going to go out for lunch. And uh, we haven't got any amount out here to, to uh, brag about, that's for darn sure. But I've got one more hitch I'm going to go get, and then We'll be done for this morning. We have other things to do this afternoon, so we won't be working here. But uh, I'm really pleased with how it worked out with Ken and William starting to get the hang of him. So hopefully over time, we can maybe even show you a little bit more about skidding with one horse and hauling out firewood. Well, good evening, everybody. It is a beautiful evening out after we, after, a beautiful day. We've had a lot of sunshine all day today. As you can snow see the little bit of snow that we got over the last couple of days is mostly all gone. The temperature was in the upper 40s today and it was great to be in the woods this morning for a little while and then this afternoon we were able to get a few more things done. I'm walking up into my field right now to get my excavator that I had left up here from um, doing the tiling job that I did. 
So I actually did some footage of doing that tiling job this afternoon and we'll jump to that now. Okay guys, I just remembered, I told you I'd try to film a little bit of this operation and I won't be able to actually show you me doing anything, but I'll explain what I'm doing. So I've got the pipe buried in the ground, I gotta cover it up now. And these other two four inch pipes are new pipes that I was able to dig down and find the old pipes and put a connector in there and connect these two short pipes to that so that I can shove them into those two holes right there and then cover it all up. So there, she, there you have it. Will it work? I sure hope so. So I was able to get that all done and I want to show it to you now. The, I guess we could call it the finished product. So up next to the trees here, as you can see, the snow is still here a little bit because the sun just does not hit here very often, as much as elsewhere. But here's my job, the finished job. And if you listen carefully, you can hear the water going down into the big tube and going, apparently, going somewhere, hopefully, down to the end of the field and out the other end of the pipes. As we're looking down through here, you can see that the pipes are definitely taking water because with the amount of water that's coming into those through those small holes, this tub would be right full, except for the fact that they are taking water. So that's that's great. So I'm real happy with the way this is working. And uh, as you can see up above there, there's a lot of water coming down through the woods, down into this hole and into this pipe. So now I've got one other thing I want to show you in the sawmill. So I'm just taking the excavator down out of the field and I thought we'd just take a quick peek here of the outlet of my pipes. And as you can see there's a lot of other water running down from all the snow runoff that's coming into this ditch. But there's still a lot of water coming down through those pipes also. So I think we have it somewhat fixed. There still may be some issues down at this end of this line, like I told you in this last one of my last videos, that we may have to deal with at some point, but for right now, we'll call it done. Okay, our last update for tonight and for this video. As you can see, we have a naked sawmill. There's no motor on here. And here's our motor. And I wanna show you guys something especially for you mechanical guys, which is not me. Check out that hole in the motor. Pretty good size, huh? We really did some damage. So now, as we suspected, we need a new motor. A friend of mine took it off today, disconnected the pulleys, so that when we get the new motor, we can slap it right on and get it back to work. This is a 38 horsepower Kohler. And so we went to the Kohler dealer, which we have one right here close by. And uh, it is a five month waiting period to get this motor. And we tried several places and same thing. You can't get these motors. So I went to Woodmiser or I called Woodmiser up and they have one and they are gonna be sending it to me. Well, actually I gotta go pick it up sometime this week. Um, but my goodness, the price is through the roof. I was expecting maybe $3,500 for this a new motor. $5,100 for a new motor. And I have to go pick it up and I still have to pay to get it all put together. So this is kind of a big expense, but that's the way it is in business. Sometimes you have these big expenses and there's no doubt it stinks, but what you gonna do? Anyways, I'm, I'm uh, gonna get a new motor and we're gonna get this back together so we can get back to sawing. So anyways, you guys have a great day. Hope you enjoyed this video. 
We'll see you next time.